So I'm in Aurea right now, and what I've done is I've drawn a very simple hi-hat pattern here on a MIDI track. And because I've used the pencil tool, all of the note values are exactly identical. So when I press play, as you can imagine, it's going to sound really robotic and machine-like. But we can change that. So I'm going to tap the effects button on the track, and I'm going to make sure that I'm in the MIDI control tab and not the channel strip. Now in the MIDI control tab, there's quite a lot of controls that you can add non-destructively to your MIDI. So the first thing I'm going to do is in the quantize tab here, I'm going to set my grid to eight note so that any controls that I touch here are going to be affected by the grid. The first thing I can do obviously is to alter the swing. So let's bring the swing up to three quarters and you can hear straight away how that's affecting my hi-hats. Now, one really nice thing about doing it this way in Aurea is that it's completely non-destructive, so you can come back at any time and change it. Now, not many iOS doors do this. GarageBand is one of the few that does, and Aurea is another. But as well as adjusting swing, there's a few other things you can do. So if you look down at the bottom left, you have these two dials that are labeled random one and random two. So in random one, I'm going to set the value to be velocity. And in random two, I'm going to set it to be position. Now, if I increase random one all the way, you can see, or you can hear rather, how that is affecting the hi-hats. They're sounding much more human. I'm also going to add a little bit of randomization to the position value, and that's going to make it sound even more human. So you can hear with just three steps, adding some swing and two random velocity values, our hi-hats are now sounding a lot more natural and a lot less mechanical. And just to offer some contrast, I'm going to zero all these values just so you can hear the difference. And now I'll just quickly add them again. So this is a great way of just livening up drum machine patterns or anything that's been created algorithmically. Now, let me just zero all these values again. And what we're going to look at next is the groove templates. So I'm going to just go through a few of them. So at the moment we have the completely mechanical hi-hats. And now I'm going to apply a groove template. Just put the strength and the velocity strength to 100. And you can hear how that's affecting it. Let's change that. And obviously all of these all have a slightly different feel to each other. And of course, you can still randomize further with the random dials down here, just to make it feel even more human and add swing on top. So you have a lot of flexibility here. And of course, you can also create your own groove templates if you want, because there's a save button. So what you can do is create a MIDI pattern that you like, and you can save that as a groove template. You also have the option to use some other controls such as velocity shift. So for example, if you want to make your MIDI part louder, just drag that clockwise. And if you want to make it quieter, just drag it anti-clockwise. And if you have a lot of variation in your velocities, you can add velocity compression or even expansion and do the same with the length. And another great thing, of course, if you go back to the grid options, is if you have a part that you actually performed yourself and you need to quantize it, you can use these options to actually quantize non-destructively, just like you can in GarageBand. And as well as all these non-destructive options, you have a whole bunch of destructive MIDI processors in this process menu. And as far as I know, no other iOS store has all of these options. So you've got a lot of MIDI effects that you can apply destructively simply by selecting a MIDI region and going to the process menu here. So I hope you found this video interesting and thank you very much for watching.